What's up, heathens? How ya doing? Today, as you can tell, we got a new setup and shit. Oh fuck! I, I accidentally hit my my microphone. We got a new setup, so I hope that you like it. I mean, you know, we got this big giant fucking turtle behind me, but you know, that's just normal here on the flat Earth, right? <laughs> Speaking of which, tonight we have Rob Skiba and his uh, speech at the Flat Earth Conference, because really wasn't a speech. He prepared a video beforehand, like weeks beforehand, for his own channel, and then he just played the video at the conference. See, normally at conferences and shit, you prepare something, and you come up with something to actually give the people. And all he did was just play one of his YouTube videos, which... Honestly, that's a little, like, unprofessional in my opinion, but, you know, who, uh, what, what the fuck do I know? But, if I paid the prices for that, I'd be pissed. Yeah, Casey, I, you guys can't hear KC, but she said if she paid the ticket prices for that, she would be pissed. And I have to agree, honey, I would be pissed too. I, I, I would be pissed at the, in the first place for paying, like, 200 300 dollars to be at a Flat Earth conference, but... Whatever. Hey, I learned. Now we're going to be getting into the actual video tonight. That is Rob Skiba. I have not formally addressed Rob Skiba on this particular channel yet. But, I mean, I can. you can rest assured it's going to be the same kind of shit. But we're just going to kind of point and laugh at the at the kid in the dunce hat in the room. Um, I, made you, I made you a dunce hat. A dunce, a hat. I, I I know, honey. I actually used it today. Oh. <laughs> uh, neuter dude. Hi, Casey. Nice to hear you again. Hi, neuter dude. I feel <laughs> weird calling him that. Like, hi, dude, without your balls. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Story says, "Should I stay here or go watch Logic?" Um, you stay, stay, here. stay, stay here. I would say stay here. Okay. So testing the globe. Uh, like I said before. This is Rob Skiba at a conference presenting one of his own YouTube videos that's a debunk of another YouTube video. Uh, the YouTube video, which I actually have linked in the description down below, is just 10 reasons why we know the Earth is round. And so Rob's like, oh, I'm going to show all these motherfuckers what's what's what. Okay. Oh, we got a new member. Little Wiener. <laughs> I feel sorry for you, Toad, still. Welcome him in the fashion that we welcome Skeptic Mafia members. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining the Skeptic Mafia. Trust me, this is the best Skeptic Mafia around. Checks are always in the mail. Um, okay, so let's go on ahead and let's get to Rob Skiba here. Number 10. All the other planets and stars we've ever seen are round, and there's no reason to indicate that the Earth should be any different. Okay, that's an interesting assumption, but it's not a proof. It's like okay. <clears throat> got another uh, got another super chat. G E did <clears throat> J E did not do his job. Where is the whiskey? I've actually got whiskey in in the fridge. It's uh, wild turkey honey whiskey. It's really good, but um, I get fucked up really quick with it because I drink fast. That's why the Bud Lights being near pure water is perfect for me during these streams. You can have sweet. Oh my goodness! I have been given, but I've, I've been given permission, guys. Y'all, y'all <laughs> can't see it on there, but it says Wild Turkey American Honey Whiskey, and I can have a swig apparently. Bottoms up, fuckers. Mmm. <laughs> I have to say, I prefer whiskey straight. Really? Yeah. Ooh. I love whiskey straight, especially that honey whiskey. Okay. Let's get on into it. Like looking at a pool table and saying, wow, all the billiard balls are spherical. Well, that means the table must be too. Um, actually, this is totally incorrect. I mean, he won this is a, uh, a, a this is an equivalence fallacy. Basically, he's trying to say that the pool balls are the same as the pool table. So saying that all the pool balls are, are, are spherical, that means that the pool table should be spherical. But in actuality, it would be a lot like having a flat uh, or, or one pool ball 
and saying, well, all the other pool balls are spherical, that must mean the one that we don't have is also spherical. This is a totally legit, rational way to reason into it, okay? So he's, he's, this is fallacious that he's putting off here. Of course, the other planets that are, are orbiting our sun would give us an indication as to what uh, the shape of our earth is because there's like, like that's just not how nature works. Nature's not going to do something special for one set of things. And then in another subset of the same things do something else. Like that's just not how nature works. Nature is uniform. So he's, he's wrong. Oh, uh, my, sorry, Mike MC. Uh, huh? Right. <clears throat> Mike MC, Netro dude, do, do, da, do, baby sha. Sorry, I probably, I needed to sing that in the wrong way so that I didn't get flagged. That's, that's why that was sung in such a weird fucking way. <laughs> I, I don't think they believe you. Pro probably not. Yeah. Or looking up and seeing the lights overhead. Oh, the light bulbs are spherical. Therefore, the table must be too. <laughs> No, it would be like, oh, hey, look, this set of light bulbs is spherical. And, it, you know, the one that we cannot see or you've hidden one, what shape is it? Oh, well, most likely it's going to be spherical. There's no way that it's going to be square, flat or any other fucking way uh, unless it's one of those, I guess, modern art pieces. But at the same time, I mean, this is a perfectly legit re uh, a way to reason towards a spherical Earth. No, that's not a proof of anything. Number nine, time zones. Day and night happen at different times at different places on Earth. In fact, it's always day somewhere and night somewhere else. Okay. Okay, so before he gets into it, I wanted to actually elaborate a little bit on time zones. Did you know, honey? Yes, what? That time zones originally didn't exist. I did know that. Yeah, do you know what caused the invention of time zones? I do. What was that? Um, something to do with farming and um, electricity. No. No. I'm sorry. The you're you're well. <laughs> no. It's it, it's sort of related because that's actually daylight savings time. Oh. Ben Franklin invented daylight savings time to help with farming and all that other stuff. Okay, so I was just mixing up. You said time yeah. zones. Time zones. No. Okay. <laughs> no. So. <laughs> Uh, time zones were originally invented to uh, uh, to help with mass travel, travel by trains over vast distances. So the railway system uh, created a necessity for a uniform time system. And a Canadian actually invented the time zones as a way to uniformly set time in, you know, all locations so that they're reflective of, uh, you know, what, like where you're at in the world and, and, you know, what basically time of day it is. Before that, you had local time zones. Like in one city, you had one time and then in another city, you had another time. So basically... Um, uh, you would have like this profession of clock setters and like the local um, uh, clock, uh, the local uh, clockwork guy. I can't remember what they're called right now, but the local clockwork guy would actually be the guy that would have the official town timepiece and it would set it to that. The local clockwork guy is called the TikToker. The, t the TikToker is technical the local. Term. That's the technical term. The local, <laughs> thank you, honey, for looking that up. I, I didn't. I just made it up. Oh, you just made it up? Okay. Yeah. See how easy it is? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so the time zones were originally divided up because there's a 24-hour day, and they knew that the Earth rotated at 15 degrees per hour uh, even then. And so what they did was they divided up the world into 24 different time zones because in an hour's time, 15 degrees would pass. The, you know, the Earth rotates at 15 degrees per hour. Um, so, yeah, that, that's a little bit of information. I do actually have a much better link down in the description if you want to learn more about it. Uh, so just keep that in mind when he's going through these time zones. Sean Hawkins says that the local timekeeper's name is Biggest Tickus. Biggest Tickus. 
<laughs> you gonna go to the biggest tickets in order to get that timepiece set? Yep. Well, I guess I have to, unless you got a, a standard timepiece with you. Well, fuck, for $5 I do. <laughs> that, that was a real thing. You actually had people that were like traveling time setters and they would have an official uh, uh, clock set to an official time and he would ha- he would pay, like you would pay him for the service of setting your clock to wherever the fuck you got to. And oh, they originally set their timepieces to noon. Like, um, you know, they would calibrate their times to whenever the sun was directly overhead because that was noon. So there you go. Today Island! Time zones. I think part of the problem is people who come from the spinning heliocentric globular Earth model, as soon as they hear flat, they just try to squish the Earth into a pancake and keep everything else the way it is in the heliocentric globular Earth model. Actually, we do this because it matches our observations. Whenever we look through telescopes and we see the planets in the telescopes, it, all, uh, it also matches you know, what we get back from satellites and uh, um, uh, probes that we send out into the universe. So, I mean, it, it's not because of that. It's because it matches what we actually see in reality. Meaning, okay, now you just got this flat disk inside a solar system. And they try to apply the dynamics of the solar system in a, in a massively huge sun 93 million miles away, you know, over a flat Earth and apply what they know in that paradigm to this paradigm. Well, that doesn't work. If we're on a circular, still flat Earth set on pillars under a dome within which the sun, moon, and stars are placed on day four, according to the Bible, then the sun and moon are what's moving and the stars are what mo- are, are moving, not the Earth, and therefore they are a lot closer and a lot smaller. So basically what he's showing here is Yahweh's terrarium, which is apparently what he thinks it is. And he only cites the Bible. And this is basically an appeal to tradition or an appeal to myth or something like that. I mean, call it what you will. He's using old ass information in order to inform himself on his worldview. And he's neglecting the new information that we have. Like all of the information that we've gleaned from all of astronomy and science since the Bible was written. Which, I mean, granted, astronomy science didn't really exist for a long time, um, you know, after the Bible was written. But um, the, the fact that we've gained new information and they just reject that verifiable new information should immediately send off like warning bells and shit. So I created this animation. You guys have probably seen this. A lot of people have used it in their videos and stuff like that. It got mirrored. Now, I stated right from the start that this was not meant to be to scale. This one's a little better. Uh, I still think the sun may be a little bit too big, but you see the sun going over the equator here at an altitude of approximately 3,000 miles. Mike MC, my wife is a theist and mad because I'm sending money. Ha, ha, ha. Damn, Mike, I don't want to get you in trouble, man. I mean, uh. Does she give money to the church? If well, she gives money to the church, you can give money to whatever the fuck you Are you, you comparing me to the church? No, I was talking to Mike. <laughs> I know, I know you were. I don't know if she gives money to the church, but I mean, you could, you could, if you want to fight, you could bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> But hey, you know what? Like a church, we do do good shit here. We support charities. We give to, we give back to our community. Do do, do 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 do. Just like this flat Earth map, (laughs) it's shit. This flat Earth map is shit. For one thing, he thinks that this little pinball thingy floating three thousand miles up in the air is representative of a sun. For one thing, I would love to know what this motherfucker is made out of. For another thing, I would love to know what makes this motherfucker go round and round, <laughs> round and round. And he can't give me those answers. He's just like, I don't know. I just know that it does that shit. Okay. Like, that's what he says. Uh, But you can't just make these baseless assertions without anything to support them. It's like, I know enough to know that the scientific consensus is wrong, but I don't know enough to explain why it's wrong. Other than, well, shit. Just look up at the sun, will ya? Don't actually look at the sun. (laughs) You can tell that it's rotating in the sky above us. (laughs) 
Um, another thing is, is that sunsets do not work on this particular model whatsoever. Sunsets are so pretty. Sunsets are pretty, honey, uh, but they won't work on this particular model. The sun would never set on this particular model. It would just go out in the distance. But also, he's going to admit something right here that should clue you in as to how bullshit this particular model is. Uh, according to this scale right here. And a lot of people will say, well, you know, the, what is the sun acting like a spotlight? No. So uh, obviously spotlight. Hold on. Sorry. Uh, Arduin 666 because God. <laughs> um, let's say JC, uh, a, a fellow skeptic mafia member said, Goss engineer, I know what this, uh, uh, the, this flurf sun is made of. God spunk. Super glow stick edition. <laughs> and then we got Ves Bakalov. Bak Bakalov. The Bible was written by the Rob Skibas of that age. They were ignorant of the science uh, that was already developed. Well, yeah, because at the time the Bible was written, we already knew that the earth was uh, uh, spherical. And there, uh, I mean, there are passages in the Bible that could be construed as supporting a flat earth thing. But for the most part, it doesn't really address all that. But there's a lot of things that people say is indicative of actual science in the Bible, but they're not actually indicative of science at all. Vess's name makes me want baklava. You that, know that, um, that oh god baklava? well yeah that's just because we heard it on jeopardy recently no i mean it's christmas i had some recently oh okay oh you had in. you had some at work okay. well, somebody brought some in so i had a little triangle it was <laughs> all right let's continue with this shit shall we no sure. it's not acting like a spotlight and to prove that i'll bring in a little 3d object here and i'll bring in a little dome on top of it here to show you that this light is throwing off in all directions, up, down, all around. It's not a spotlight. So all the critics out there, you can stop saying that. It's not shining as a spotlight. It's what's known in 3D as a point light that has been adjusted with a limited light throw attenuation. So uh, Ves Bakalov says for KC to get Baklava. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so basically, he admitted here that he had to change the point uh, light source uh, to be attenuated. Like so, so basically, that means that after a little ways, the light actually stops emitting. And so this is nice for like um, you know 3D situations and whatnot. But I mean, honestly, that's not actually how like light works. Um, because there, there would be like no like attenuate like if there was light attenuation on like stars and everything like that, we wouldn't be able to see stars out there. So immediately he admits right here that he has to change physics in order to make his shit work. And that's just with how the light projects onto it. That's not to mention the change in physics of what it's made out of, because we know the sun to be made out of plasma. We know the sun to be emitting, you know, all these uh, uh, beta, alpha, and gamma particles, this radiation, and we could detect that. Uh, you know, we we know that that the sun is is moving through the Milky Way galaxy, and we know why it's moving through the Milky Way galaxy. We know all of these things, but what he does is he changes physics in order to make his model work. That's not science. Another five dollar chat, Terrence Clark. <laughs> it's Photoshop, cause it has to be Rob Skiba. <laughs> we were just talking about that earlier. I know. Tesla Ranger says gamma particles aren't a thing. I, I mean, well, I, I mean, I, I at least in my research, alpha, beta, and gamma uh, uh, is what is emitted by the sun, uh, as far as I know. I mean, I guess I could be wrong, um, but I'll have to look into it more, I guess. See? Difference between me and a flat earther. I can admit when I might be wrong, and I'll look into it, and if I am wrong, I'll admit that I'm wrong. This fuck won't. Now, shortly after I did that video, I was trying to figure out how the Four Seasons work. And you can see that video right here on YouTube, how the Four Seasons work on the Flat Earth model. And that one was really interesting. Uh, Mike MC, you just hate God! I actually discovered this quite by accident, really. 
this video came as a result of me trying to figure out on the globe, how does the 24 hour sun work? And so I use Stellarium, which is heliocentric globe based software. And this software, heliocentric globe based software, showed the sun and moon speeding up and slowing down um, as it was creating these circles. And I just thought, well, geez, I wonder what that would look like on the flat earth map, on the AE map. So I just superimposed it on that. And then I just flipped it horizontally because I'm looking down instead of looking up. And it actually showed the sun and moon going between the tropics and slowing down when it gets in the northern so-called hemisphere and speeding up when it gets in the southern hemisphere. But of course, the critics look at this and they ask a reasonable question. Does it change speeds? Because the circle's bigger out here in the wintertime going around the Tropic of Capricorn. So what is speeding the sun up and then slowing it back down? It was constantly changing directions and speeds with your model. Yes, it was. Again. So we had another super chat. Some Bible verses literally describe space. Law. Epi ignores even their own religious texts when needed. <laughs> I'm not going to try that. Scott Fronafel. Fr Fronafel. What the fuck ever. Like falafel. Like falafel. <laughs> You know, I, I, <laughs> I, I like how like K even Kent Hovind doesn't fall for the flat Earth shit. Like that's I guess maybe that's one thing that me and Kent Hovind can agree on. Flat Earth is dumb as fuck. So uh, other creationists are like that too. Most creationists I would say are actually not flat Earthers. Uh, they actually shit on it. Heliocentric globe-based software created that. And interestingly enough, I found a video online that a guy went apparently on the Tropic of Cancer at a certain time of the year on the equator and on the Tropic of Capricorn and videotaped the moon going across the screen. Now, he had it at double speed, and I made it a lot faster just for the sake of this video. But sure enough, the moon was moving at different speeds across his lens. Uh, now, I didn't have enough time to really suss out like a, a great answer for this i guess but what i will say is that as far as like the re like from a reference point that's like outside the earth uh at any point on the earth you are moving uh you know at variations of uh, a thousand miles per hour like you know as you get closer to the north you're moving a lot slower than you are at the equator as you get farther south you're moving a lot slower too um uh or or maybe it's a lot faster fast. yeah sorry you move faster i got that backwards sorry let me do that again uh, so as you go north and south from the equator you actually get faster because it's it's getting closer to like i guess the center like if you're looking down on it from like a, a, a 2d perspective you're getting closer to the center so you'd be moving faster um which uh let's see Uh, oh yeah. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, uh. Now the Earth rotates at zero point zero zero seven or something like that rotations per minute. Um. Let's see, the speed gets less. I was right first. Oh, sorry. The speed gets less as you move north, but it's still a good clip throughout the United States because gravity holds us tight and everything like that. Yeah, so, uh, sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting this. I was right first. <laughs> so, yes, as you get farther north and south, uh, the speed uh, 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 declines. Um, uh, like if, if you're actually measuring in miles per hour and the reference point is like not on the earth on the earth, it's moving very slow because of the rotations per minute. So it's no surprise to me that you would capture these different things. But then again, I don't know what the situation is with these uh, particular photo captures. Um, so uh, I'm going to, I'm going to have to edit this up in post because <laughs> I fucking <laughs> fucking screwed that up. <laughs> fastest over the Tropic of Capricorn, medium over the equator, and slowest over the Tropic of Cancer. I'd be curious to see how the Globers explain this. 
the speed that the earth rotates in miles per hour if you want to measure it like that but you won't feel the speed of it so but at least the moon here reflected exactly what stellarium heliocentric globe based software had depicted so <clears throat> basically he's he's uh using kind of a genetic fallacy saying that stellarium is based on the globe model therefore it can't be correct when in actuality, Stellarium would be a good example of the globe model, and it would actually, de, you know, depict, um, you know, what we see in reality because that's what it's designed to do. So, I mean, he's providing these alternative ideas as to how things work on this Earth, but he's not telling us exactly how they work. Whereas in Stellarium or the globe model in general, we know how this stuff works. We know the laws that govern all of these things. And I can only assume if the moon's doing this, that the sun must be doing the same thing. Though I'm unaware of any tests that have been done in that regard. Number seven, triangles. If you walk 10,000 kilometers straight along the Earth's surface, turn 90 degrees to your right, walk 10,000 kilometers more, turn right again and walk another 10,000 kilometers, you'll be back to where you started, having successfully made a triangle with three 90 degree angles. As any geometry student can tell you, this is impossible on a flat surface. Um, so what? This isn't a proof of anything. You can make a 90 degree triangle on a ball. Ooh, wow. How is that a proof? Okay, so how, his question is, how is this a proof that the world is a globe? It's a proof that the world is a globe because on a flat plane, you cannot literally start at one point, turn exactly 90 degrees, 90, uh, like plot out, like, like you know, a, a, a triangle like that, right? Plot out a 90 degree uh, plot out like where you would be and then literally turn 90 degrees go that direction and then from that spot right there that you landed at turn another 90 degrees go the direction and you will end up where you actually plotted so <clears throat> you can't do that on a flat surface this is something that you could physically do on a flat uh, on a on a sphere you can plot this out so <clears throat> yeah th that's why it's a proof and I get that he's just sort of shucking it aside, but this is how flat earthers work. They shuck aside or, or they shuck all information that contradicts their own model. And they don't want to actually uh, uh, address it. And there's no way that he can address it. He, there's no way that he can explain why you can physically do that on the earth. Uh, Mike MC, aliens equals pyramid S. Pyramids. Oh, sorry. <laughs> aliens <laughs> equals pyramids. I have to say, I wonder if Mike is wanting to piss off his fucking wife right now. <laughs> I could just see her over in the corner like, you still donating to that atheist son bitch? And Mike's just like, fuck yeah, I am. <laughs> I don't know if you drink, Mike, but I mean, I, that's how it works out in my head. <laughs> Tell your wife I'm sorry. <laughs> that the Earth's a globe. That's ridiculous. And guess what? I can draw a perfect circle inside a triangle. That means the Earth's a pyramid. No, that's not at all. That's I don't like. This is such a non sequitur. I don't even know what to say to this because it's so fucking ridiculous. Rob, why are you doing this? This is hurting me right now. This is a proof. Did he? I wonder if he just face palmed with his mic. It, that's what it, it sounded like. He just head butted his mic like, boom. This is proof. Fuck this shit. Boom, boom. <laughs> All he proved is that you could draw a 90 degree triangle on a ball. Yeah, but you see, the point is, is that you can physically do it like here in the real world. You can physically do that shit. Wow. Number six, the sun in general gets lower and lower in the sky as you travel away from the equator, and you can use this to directly measure the Earth's curvature. Pick two places a few hundred miles directly north and south of each other, and at noon measure the shadows cast by a vertical meter stick at each location. You can use the shadow lengths to figure out the angle between the sticks, and once you add in how far apart they are, you can calculate the Earth's curvature. Okay. Fuck. Ooh, I am God. You, you should not be watching this because the earth is flat and you are in my terrarium. Ooh. Oh, so, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, that's that's one of my voices. I can do the CC voice pretty well. Creationist cat, not conspiracy cats. 
Um, shit, I gotta find my video. There's my video. Okay. This is basically a repackaged version of the Eratosthenes experiment, where if you assume you have a distant stationary sun, and that distant stationary sh sun is shining straight down on, let's say, a stick or an obelisk, so there's hardly any shadow at all. The shadow is like, you know, right in line with the pole itself going into the ground. And then, you know, at some distance, you know, let's say to the north, there's another obelisk or stick in the ground. And, you know, the distance between the two and that one's casting a longer shadow. Well, you'd say, well, the only way that's possible is if the Earth is on a globe. Reasonable assumption. And actually, as a mathematician, it was a, a brilliant deduction. However... <clears throat> So, yes, Eratosthenes, I finally get it correct. Eratosthenes did that experiment in the BC area. I believe it was uh, maybe 3rd century? Fuck. Let's see. <laughs> Didn't you look any of this up before you started? I was a little busy beforehand. Y yes, 3rd century. I got you it right. You haven't even worked at all this week. I have been working my ass off this week, okay? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Eratosthenes lived in the 3rd century BC. So uh, he was able to do this, and he was able to approximate the circumference of the Earth. Now, you see, the thing is, is that it didn't show, like, one particular ring of the flat Earth or something like that. Uh, I mean, that's not what it did. The only way this particular experiment works is with the sun 93 million miles away and how it casts a shadow on a uh, shadow of objects on the earth. Um, because Eratosthenes, he took one measurement of, uh, at this statue right on, uh, the equator at a well on the equator. And then he went a little North and then he measured the shadow there and he was able to figure out uh, you know, uh, the, the approximate circumference of the earth. So, um, it only works if the sun is at the center of the universe and the sun is 93 million miles away. Um, it doesn't actually work if the, um, if the sun is small and local, the, uh, the light, uh, would be shining more, I guess, on those objects. And so therefore it would be casting a longer shadow. The angle at which it would be casting it would be different and would be a different shadow. So let's see where he goes with it though. We're almost done. The same thing works if you've got a sun that's small and localized and moving over the earth that you could get a shadow like that. I mean, I created this model right here that shows exactly that. You know, they got the little point light over an obelisk here. Then I move it over and look at how the shadows change, boys and girls. Well, yeah, but it also wouldn't be that big. Like you're assuming how big the shadow would be and you're being like, yep, see, look, shadows fucking appear. It's like no fucking shit, Rob. Of course shadows would appear on one and not on the other when you have the light source directly above one motherfucker. Of course it wouldn't be. It doesn't require the Earth to be a globe. Oh, shit. That was actually it. It doesn't require the Earth to be a globe. Um, I would I would actually disagree. I would say that it does require the Earth to be a globe uh, because of the way that Eratosthenes actually measured it. He measured it going north to south, and so that meant that it was cur like it's curved all around, but he was measuring it in a way that showed that it was a globe because it is a globe. Fucking dipshits. Well, heathens, that's going to be it for the video tonight. If you are watching on the replay or you're leaving right now, I appreciate you watching my videos. If you wouldn't mind, share this motherfucker out because it would help me out a lot. I'm trying to get to 40K and then next year I have a certain set of resolutions that I'm going to try to fulfill on the channel that I'm going to be talking about soon. But uh, it would really help me if you shared this out, you liked it, you left a comment and all that kind of good shit. Uh, we're going to be going into comments now, but if you're leaving, I hope you guys have a great night. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice.